Hello everyone, I'm Jonas and today I will be doing some thoughts on procedural content um, in games I suppose but yeah, procedural content in general um, the reason I did this is whoops, because I got a comment on my Disgaea video um, with this Sawyer guy, sorry, I'm not going to try to pronounce his first name um, about the procedural content in Disgaea uh, compared to games like Civ, for instance. Um, so I have been playing a lot of Civ lately. Um, actually playing more than I should have because, uh, as you can see, this was a month ago. So uh, I should probably have made this video a while ago. But now I'm actually done with the slides and I've gotten around to recording it. So here we go. Uh, first things first, there are a few different reasons why you would want procedural content in games. Um, number one is gameplay influence, or basically how the content influences the game and how you play it. Um, I will obviously get around to more examples uh, later. The next one is exploration, which is obviously more important in, for instance, uh, Civ. Uh, compared to this guy where you can see the map um, as soon as you enter the new level, basically. Number three is gambling. Um, as soon as you have any sort of random or pseudo-random uh, element to a game, um, the gambling aspect becomes some small part of it. Um, number four is the surprise or fear factor. I'm not really sure what to call it, but Fear Factor actually sounds a bit silly, so I probably shouldn't have used that. And number five is content, which is one of the main features in this guy. Um, originally, I wanted to leave this out, but um, you obviously can't ignore the impact of just having more content in a game, because some games you want to continue playing after uh, you've finished with the main campaign. Uh, if we take, for instance, Devil May Cry as an example, um, if there was a mode that basically just threw more and more difficult enemies at you, I would probably have kept playing that game. But since you have to go through the tutorial and the side missions and everything just to play it again, I haven't really picked it up since I made my last video. So, um, Oh yeah, another point. Um, there is different ways of approaching the sort of procedural content. Um, in this case you can see I have the Binding of Isaac on the left side and this is um, Nuclear Throne. Uh, I haven't actually played either of those games so they may not be uh, excellent examples of what I'm talking about so I'll explain it further. Uh, but what I'm talking about is designed fragments versus uh, random, I mean it's obviously not truly random, but um, um, designed fragments in this case is basically each room is designed and the layout and the item drops and stuff like that is the procedural part of it. While in this case, um, Nuclear Throne, what it looks like is, um, I'll bring up an empty layer. Just wait a minute. So, if we bring up the empty layer, what it looks like is that you basically spawn a bunch of different uh, rooms. Something like this, maybe. I mean, it's obviously not really random, but uh, something like this, and then you basically just create the paths uh, linking the rooms together. Something like that, for instance. Um, I've seen an example of this, uh, basically, this algorithm. Whoopsie daisy, I almost threw, th threw something on the floor. Uh, but yeah, so this is more random than the uh, uh, Binding of Isaac. Uh, so I'll just try to make the distinction between uh, the design fragments. Um, some games like, for instance, Diablo 3, uh, actually combine the uh, fragments with uh, sort of more random uh, more random elements um, which I will also be coming back to later 
Um, so, number one, um, the gameplay influence. So I have Diablo 3 as an example here. This is obviously from the beta because you can see the wall of zombie thingy. Um, but yeah, um, how the uh, the map influences the game in Diablo 3 is mostly about uh, sort of the layout, um, the mix between narrow and what the, the mix between narrow and wider parts. Um, which is basically just how you tackle the different enemies and where you kite them to. Um, since I made the video on the Diablo 3, um, you should know that the gameplay is pretty simple. So, uh, most of the influence in regards to gameplay is um, just how the paths are laid out, wide areas, uh, narrow areas where you can kite, uh, do sort of better AOE, uh, be more efficient, things like that. Um, then we also have uh, random seeds like this one in um, Civ, which I actually saw on Kodaku. Um, so this is basically the absolute worst start you can have. Not only is your settler... Um, whoops, as usual I'm drawing on the wrong layer, but you should be used to that by now. So you basically have your settler uh, closed in, and then you also have your first warrior that you're supposed to explore with uh, closed in. So this is the most extreme example of um, of a civil location. Um, so this is one of the biggest influences on gameplay. Um, but then as you sort of continue with Civ, if you have a more uh, reasonable start, uh, you can see it's something like this. Uh, in the bottom right here, um, you can see probably half the minimap, but it's basically just an island. So the uh, the island goes from here to here. What the hell? Yeah, okay. My drawing is really weird. That generally tends to happen with these sort of bigger files, but whatever. Um, so yeah. Um, there are basically three different types of cities in Civ, or different reasons for building a city. One is because it has an obvious source of food, or several sources of food, which means it grows quickly. Number two is uh, lots of production, uh, like hills and mines and uh, quarries, stuff like that, in the top left here. And then you also have your luxury resources, which basically give you happiness and gold. Um, but as you expand, um, like once you have three cities, you can basically have one for each type. Uh, meaning that as the game progresses, the influence on uh, gameplay from your spawn becomes less and less. Um, so once you have three cities, you should be getting pretty close to even. And once you have five or six, the spawn itself and your first city shouldn't really have such a big impact on your gameplay anymore. Uh, which is an example of great design, because uh, if you have a game where the spawn uh, sort of makes you play differently, um, you should be able to get back to your uh, default strategy. Um, and then you also have examples like this one in Left 4 Dead, um, because it's not quite random, because the AI director obviously has his reasons for doing what he does. For instance, you will always have a quiet moment after you've done fighting a tank, uh, or a witch, or something like that. Um, there are also obviously swarms of mobs. I'm not sure this is an actual screenshot, because I don't think the game would throw something like this at you. Um, but, I mean, it's still pseudo-random, because um, you don't really know what's going to happen. So, the AI director has a bunch of uh, influence on how you play the game, just because you know that if you've finished killing sort of one of the bigger guys, you know that, okay, this is, will be a quiet moment, so now we can heal up. Um, so you don't really have to worry in that specific moment. Um, then you... 
you have games like Terraria, for instance, uh, like this example, which is really more about the exploration part. Um, sure, you will gather resources and things like that, but you will tend to mostly ex explore because uh, because you want the materials and not because uh, you want to see cool sites or things like that. Let's say you're playing World of Warcraft, for instance. Um, when I got the, uh, what's it called, Lich King expansion, um, I just went out and wanted to look at the different areas because obviously it had some pretty cool uh, art direction and things like that. Uh, so it's not all about exploration, but you have the option of doing that. Um, um, what the hell? Yep, okay. So here you have a sort of start in Civ. Um, so in this case, you will pretty much know that uh, this will be water. And what tends to happen is that uh, sort of the entire area will be water. Uh, just because of how the uh, this is played on continents mode and that's just how the game tends to uh, to come out um, I mean sure it could be water all the way whoops white this could all be water for instance um, you just don't quite know so in the early stages exploration is important because you want to know where you will put your cities to get back to um, to the sort of neutral uh, neutral mode again um, so in the beginning it's pretty important which is also why uh, you get your first warrior here and it's also why I tend to build a scout as my first uh, exploration unit just because you want to know um, how your sort of how the world around you looks just so you know where you want to expand as well as know where your uh, most important enemies are going to be so you can defend against it or just keep track of them uh, but as the game goes on exploration sort of becomes uh, pointless oh, not pointless but less important because as you can see here I'm on turn 124 uh, I have three cities and I have explored uh, basically the continent that I'm on. Um, so at this point uh, I don't really care how the rest of the world looks uh, because I'm more focused on fighting sort of my uh, my two closest enemies. You have your guys here and you have your cities here. Uh, so these two will be my enemies uh, I can't really expand anywhere because I'm sort of closed off in the top left here. Um, so exploration, sure it's important in Civ, um, but it's not as important and it, it becomes less and less so after each turn that passes. Um, so point three is the gambling aspect, which is obviously a bigger case in Disgaea than it is in, for instance, Civ. Um, there is some gambling involved in the uh, the beginning exploration because you can obviously find the uh, the camps and uh, things like El Dorado, for instance, which gives you gold if you're the first to discover it. Um, so exploring is still important and it still has a bit of gambling in it, but uh, things like the chests in this guy, uh, there are also mystery innocents. Uh, I'm not sure if this is a mystery one because this is just a screenshot I grabbed from Google. Um, so you have your chests. Um, there are also different routes, obviously, in the item, uh, in the item world in this guy. For instance, you can take your, uh, what is it? It's innocents versus item boosts and if you take one of the paths you are more likely to run into pirates. Now uh, this isn't much of a gambling aspect because you can actually see in advance which way you want to go to uh, encounter the pirates so it's more of a uh, sort of what, a, what feature do you want on your item. 
Um, but there are also games like Diablo where the gambling and the procedural content is more important. Um, take the, um, what are they called? Champion packs in Diablo 3. Um, not only will you have to sort of explore to find them, you will also have to do the sort of risk reward analysis where uh, do you want to fight them or not? Um, and do you want to move on to the next area uh, before you've explored all of this one? What if the champion pack is in the area you haven't yet discovered and it will drop some legendary item that you really want, for instance? Um, so um, the gambling aspect of Diablo makes people more likely to uh, both explore uh, and it also influences gameplay because you're more likely to run into sort of various enemies. Um, oh, I had this example again here. Yeah, so exploration is also part of the gambling. Um, the next factor is the surprise or fear factor because if you take the sort of default case, which in this case is from Half-Life 2, uh, this is the Ravenholm part if you haven't played that game, which I suppose most people have. Um, so this is obviously not random at all, um, which also means that if you try to play Half-Life again, it will not be that scary. Um, obviously Half-Life isn't really designed to be a scary game, it has good lighting in most areas, uh, the zombies are really slow so you don't have to be that afraid of them. Um, Compared to something like uh, Amnesia, for instance, Half-Life isn't that scary. Uh, but then when you compare it to something like uh, Left 4 Dead 2, um, that game only becomes scary because you don't quite know what to expect. Um, if the enemies had all been... Uh, or they had all had sort of default spawning locations and you always knew where they were, that wouldn't really be a scary game. All of the scariness in Left 4 Dead comes from the fact that if you play it over and over again, you won't always get the exact same experience due to the procedural content. So um, I actually haven't played Amnesia enough to know uh, whether or not it's entirely scripted or if it has any sort of procedural content, but it's actually something that I would recommend them to do. Um, just because it would let people play it more than once. Uh, I'm not really sure if it's going to happen either way, because it's just such a linear narrative and a simple story. Uh, the gameplay aspect of Amnesia is not really the biggest selling point. It's more about the, the scariness, which will become less on each, uh, each playthrough either way. Uh, but this is just something to make sure that people stay on their toes. And I actually have a video planned where I talk about uh, sort of different spawn methods and uh, paths and stuff like that to make sure that the pl player can't really know what to expect. Uh, obviously this takes away from the ability to create a really nice uh, up-down curve with regards to gameplay and how the player uh, plays your game, but I still think it could add value. So I'll be getting back to that subject later. Um, then we also have the content aspect. This is from Minecraft, obviously, because everything is box. Uh, so there are a ton of games that have used it since, but this was really the game that went back to the cubes. Um, now, again, I haven't played Minecraft much because I expect that I would spend way too much time on it. So I haven't started it at all. But this game is pretty much all about content. It's not really supposed to be scary, even if it has scary elements. And it's not really supposed to be exploratory, even though you will have to sort of look for ingredients. But I've talked to a friend of mine so thanks Evie. Um and what he said was that basically you know pretty well where to find the basic materials that you're going to need for sort of your 
your basic construction. You won't ever have to sort of get a good seed like the one in uh, in Civ that was just terrible, because nearly every seed will uh, let you have basic materials like rock and iron and wood and things to build, just like Terraria. Um, you will get your basic materials and you will be able to build sort of a house out of wood that will um, it will stay up for most of the game basically so that is in 3d then you also have this Gaia which is obviously a massive beast when it comes to content like I talked about in the this guy video so this is uh, so the biggest part of the procedural content is in this Gaia is because of the content. That sounded weird, but yeah. The biggest part of the procedural uh, generation is in this Gaia. Uh, it's not about the exploration, it's a bit about the gambling, to be honest. But it's more about just uh, having the content and then drip feeding you the rewards. Boom. So you basically get your rewards constantly and just being allowed to keep playing your favorite game shouldn't really be scoffed at because um, some games you just want to keep playing um, if it has characters you've fallen in love with or if it has good gameplay mechanics or if it has super simple stuff um, you just want to keep going um, this is obviously one of the problems as well because you also have to provide the player with a meaningful challenge so if this one is oh my god this one is what the hell I'm writing really badly but whatever this one is player skill this axis is difficulty you will want to keep within the sort of uh, part of the game where the player has a meaningful challenge uh, it shouldn't be too easy um, and it shouldn't be way too hard it should be just right like the three little pigs or whatever um, and this is basically the failure of this Gaia uh, because a lot of the game uh, in the randomized world will be done um, basically on levels that are either too hard where all your characters get one shot or too easy where you will never die um, something like Terraria for instance does this really well because as you get further away and you sort of sort of get uh, better equipment you will also face more difficult enemies um, and Diablo 3 also does this uh, but what you need is a sort of acceleration mechanic what the hell is wrong with the transparency? Um, something like Tetris, for instance. Now, Tetris, you may or may not want to call it a procedural game. Uh, I don't really care either way. But if you know uh, how it works, basically, if you play it for a while, uh, the game goes faster and faster. And if you restart it, you restart all the way from the beginning again. Um, this is obviously some clone, which is newer, so I'm not sure how the mechanic works. But basically what it allows you to do is press down and the uh, the block will just teleport to the bottom. So if you restart it, uh, the game allows you to play it on sort of a higher difficulty setting than, than it's currently at, just by pressing the down button. So uh, even though it doesn't challenge you, you're allowed to challenge yourself. Um, so you're allowed to make the game go faster if you're able to. Uh, otherwise you basically get to take your time and something like uh, this Gaia sure it does this slightly by allowing you to have um, guys that move quicker and quicker basically uh, so instead of taking several turns to reach the exit you can create one thrower uh, that throws your sort of hard-hitting guy and then a runner that just moves from the starting position all the way over to the exit so instead of taking I don't know let's say instead of taking five moves you take three cutting the uh, two easy levels down to three moves um, which is sure 
it allows you to accelerate your farming but it really doesn't challenge you at all because you're just repeating the same moves for something up to a hundred levels like in the item world so it could have used a better acceleration mechanic um, let's say if you kill you can raise the difficulty and if you kill more you progress faster I don't know so that's pretty much it um, it's a shorter video today but I'm hoping you got something out of it um, so you have your gameplay influence which is um, it tends to be small because obviously if you created procedural levels that made big differences on how you play the game um, the game would change radically and you will have to, or you'd have to uh, uh, rely on sort of good seeds if you have seen sort of the speed run of Diablo 1 you will see exactly what uh, good seeds uh, what can happen with good seeds uh, exploration uh, more in regards to Terraria uh, Minecraft sure Diablo 3 has some of it Civ has some of it this guy really doesn't gambling Diablo this guy uh, surprise yeah I could basically only find Left 4 Dead as an example of this uh, I'm sure there are other games out there but basically just keeping the player uh, on their toes not really knowing what to expect and then you have content which is obviously where this guy is king um, and that is the different reasons for having procedural content at least that I could think of um, and this is a more sort of in-depth reply to your comment and I hope you liked it thanks for watching